James Wan saw the short film and he was, uh, he, he told me he was swimming in his pool at night and he was like looking, taking the breath, going left, going right, going left, and he thought he saw the character from the short standing at the edge of the pool looking down at him and it freaked him out. So he was like, your short scared me. I was like, my short scared James Wan. This is best day ever. Marco. I disagree. I think there should only be high art. Yes. <laughs> and reluctantly, yes. I signed on to do this movie. No, uh, I um, I love horror films because y you get to play. Uh, y you get the most amount of freedom to play. Yeah, the pool is terrifying. I, 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 how did you process it? Come to with the story? What was the kind of the initial inspiration for you? Uh, you know, it was it was it was me also feeling as a kid that the pool was terrifying. And then as an adult kind of being like, is it still terrifying? Or can, or can I tap into that feeling that I had as a kid and did anyone else feel that way? Or is that just my irrational phobia? Then we made the short film, we put it online, and we found out that hundreds of thousands of other people also had that same phobia. And I was like, oh my gosh, I remember being a kid and being convinced that Jaws was in the water and was gonna come up and, and yes. that, was, that was me, that was me. Yeah. No, that's yeah. 100, I, I even told Ryan. Yeah. Uh, that was my fear, I knew there was a great white shark. Yeah, in the, same. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. How, okay, you make the short film, how how did you get involved with Blumhouse? What was, how quickly did this happen for you? Yeah, initially it was um, James Wan saw the short film and he was, uh, he, he told me he was swimming in his pool at night and he was like looking, taking the breath, going left, going right, going left, and he thought he saw the character from the short standing at the edge of the pool looking down at him and it freaked him out. So he was like, your short scared me. I was like, my short scared James Wan. This is best day ever. That's pretty and, cool. And so from there, we teamed up with Atomic Monster and then uh, eventually led to Paul Mouse and Atomic starting this kind of new relationship and working together on stuff. And that's how it ended up at Blumhouse and Universal Studios. Marco. Hello. <laughs> Marco. Hello. <laughs> so I suppose it came about because it was a genre that I hadn't done before. And I've always wanted to be a character actress and I've always thought about my career in terms of like longevity and, and you know, that I would still be able to do lots of different things when I'm older. So I've always liked to try different things. And it was just something I had never done before. And also there's a big audience for horror movies. And so that appeal too, I was like, there's a lot to be said for movies that are just for entertainment. Like not everything has to be artistic and sort of um, highbrow all the time. I've watched so many movies just for entertainment. And that really appeals too, um, to me, because that's kind of what my job is really. And so there was that, and then the swimming aspect. I'm a big swimmer, I love swimming, I'm pretty good at swimming. Um, so that was another reason why I wanted to do it. I wanted to do all the underwater stuff. I disagree. I think there should only be high art. Yes. <laughs> and reluctantly, yes. I signed on to do this movie. No, uh, I um, I love horror films because y you get to play. Uh, y you get the most amount of freedom to play. The filmmaker gets the most amount of freedom to play. There's a lot of stuff that they can do, um, where you know that everything that you're doing <clears throat> in the moment is just like putting shit in the can. Like yeah. you're just putting stuff in the can and then they go make the film That's and you true. give them the ability. So you as the actor have a, with trust of the director and the team, um, because if you don't have trust then it can be very difficult, but good trust, you can create a wide ver array of different emotions and trust that they're gonna put it together in a cool way. Um, I, just, I just like doing horror films. The reality is I don't actually, I wouldn't call myself like a horror film connoisseur, mm -hmm. but, um, but some of the great films and great filmmakers mm -hmm. that, that they, you know, Steven Spielberg and Stanley Kubrick and, you know, Trillia, like, yeah. like go off. They've all like started in horror because you can give them, they have the most amount of tools and it's just fun to be able to be a, like a bit of a, a pawn in that scenario. Did you, were you approaching them? Did you go, yeah, I want Wyatt. I want Carrie. Yeah. Well, I did. I did. I did want Wyatt. I wanted both of them, and we cast Wyatt uh, first initially, 
and then Carrie was the second person to come on. But you know, you, you make a list, right? You make a list of like who's dream people that you'd want for this role. And Wyatt was always at the top of that list because I knew he had a background as a professional athlete and he understood the psychology of someone that's trying to like leave, leave that behind and move on with their life. And so he understood, he both was an athlete and knew the psychology of, of that. And, um, and Carrie's just, just, I mean, she was coming off of her Oscar nomination and just like, just a brilliant um, actor. Mm -hmm. So um, they were both were very, very high on my list and they just happened to be that they liked the material and they wanted to come on board and it actually happened rather quickly, which was amazing. Yeah. Well, I feel like we're seeing in, in a lot of genre, like a movie like this would have been made maybe in the 80s and yeah. would have had nobody in it. Would been like it's straight to VHS. Like, right, yeah. right, for sure. You have a really incredible cast. Yeah. Is it, it must be kind of strange and surreal to be doing that. It, it is, and it, it's so cool that like horror doesn't have the same kind of stigma that it did, you know, 20 years ago or something. Mm -hmm. Like you're seeing all these kind of highbrow horror films that you're seeing, you know, what Jordan Peele's doing, and you're yeah. seeing, you know, kind of like building on like what Shyamalan was doing in the early 2000s through today. Like I, I do feel like we're in a different, we're kind of in the renaissance of horror where like it can meet a large commercial audience, but also can be like these really powerful human stories and be like vehicle for great actors that they're not afraid to be in horror movies the way that they used to be. Um, like Ethan Hawke in The Black Phone, or, yeah. you know? Like, um, so I just think that's exciting. I think it's good for horror. I think it's good for, for movies. Like this shouldn't be, if it's done well, it doesn't have to sit on like 12 rows deep in a blockbuster. You know, it's a movie that a lot of people can enjoy on different levels and have a good time with. Now, I'm, 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 I'm happy that we're in the, the moment in horror that we are. Maybe they weren't cool people. Well, it's also the, the creativity behind it. You have so many options because you deal dealing with a lower budget, so you have to, the filmmakers have to get creative. And you know, with this film, you're playing with a pool, and you guys are having fun with this. Like you said, you're in a pool all day. What was that like for you guys? I mean, how? how <laughs> I mean, we, the pool stuff was all at the end of the movie. Like all the underwater pool stuff that I'm in, we filmed all at the end oh, of the gotcha. movie. So they kept, you know, they, they probably knew if we did that first, we probably wouldn't have come back. Right. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> but um, I liked it. I mean, I, I just because I like, you know, I'm not a, a baby, I guess. I don't like sulk about things or like if things are hard, I feel like I'm kind of I mean, I just, I don't know, I just you like that. It. Yeah, I do, yeah. Never that was been. awesome doing it with Carrie, because cause there were times where it was difficult, and like, when someone can bring the bring the whole mood down when it gets tough, which has happened before, it was like incredible to be on set with people. And Carrie, and Carrie lifted me up at times. I hoped that I was able to lift her up at times, but it was like very special that way because otherwise it would have been really. Difficult. Yeah, yeah, because the hours, you know, the night shoots, you know, but it's hard for everyone. That's the thing. There's like a crew of people. So to, to whine is so selfish because there's like we're all doing it together. So that's why I feel like it's kind of like, you know, everybody's in the same boat. It's enjoyable, if anything. This is not for the kids. I used to be scared of pools. Cider! Come on, Cider! Well, Ryan, this is cool. This is weird. Yeah, this is a little <laughs> weird. <laughs> but it's, it's, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm so impressed and I'm, I'm proud of you. Oh, I mean, we man. used to do this together and now you're, you're, you're the big cheese, man. I'm not the big cheese. Jason Blum's a big cheese. I'll never be called, no. <laughs> it's a, but thank you, I appreciate it. Of course. It definitely, definitely doesn't, Every day is, uh, is is you know kind of one of those like pinch me moments. We get to make cool, scary movies. Yeah, yeah. You made Halloween movies, dude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My house reminds me of that. So many Halloween things in the house. Sure. <laughs> All the conversations we used to have about I Halloween. Know, it's I crazy. Know, I know. So uh, let's let's dive in. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, I, so. As a kid, I, I was terrified of pools because I was for sure there was a great white shark in the pool. I, I knew that was a fact. What drove you to this project and making pools scary again? Yeah, making pools scary again. <laughs> Listen, man, I was on the I was on the swim team for a, a very long time, and uh, I was always terrified of the of the drain. Like, yeah. that was just super gnarly. You see, there was always like a little bit of a suction to it, but I would always put my hand on the bottom of it, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> and I'm sure my mom up top was like, stop 
playing around with the dragon. Um, listen, I mean, like, I think, you know, we've all seen horror movies that are based around haunted houses. You know, Amityville Horror, The Haunting, um, you know, The Conjuring films, obviously. And I, you know, I, and when I say I, all of Blumhouse, we all just responded to uh, the idea of telling a scary movie that kind of broke the trope of the haunted house and, and, and relocated it. You know, and in a way, you and I both know. Obviously, the Amityville series went in all sorts of crazy directions. <laughs> you like, think it's a haunted microphone? Um, <laughs> but you know, I think you know you can't just like throw a haunted premise onto anything. There can't just be a movie that's about a haunted shed. Yeah. You know, the pool. It's got to have some kind of mechanic to it, and the pool just lent itself to so many scary movie ideas. You know, Bryce just rolled up with this kind of wishing well allegory. He rolled up with a great human drama. He he came to us, you know, talking about this Marco Polo scene and uh, a little, you know, the voice of a little girl, you know, in the, the, the pool filter. You know, he, he, when you think about too, when you think about pools, you think about diving boards. Is there a diving board scene, Bryce? You, you bet there is. You know, doing everything that us kids would do, which is like we would hide under the diving board and try to scare someone on top. And he sets that up. Little Elliot goes underneath the diving board, except he doesn't scare somebody, something's scaring him. You know, you hear the creak of the diving board. There was just so much opportunity for so many great movie moments. We couldn't say no. And, and Atomic Monster felt the same way. They were the ones who, you know, kind of introduced us to the project and, and it was fantastic, you know? And it was, it was fantastic to make because we got to like throw ghosts people into the pool and let them <laughs> float around. It was so weird. It was so fun. No great white sharks, though. No great white sharks. Is that Sorry, for the man. sequel? No. Nah. Or I mean, you know, there was Ghost Shark. <laughs> That's I mean, true. Ghost Shark was pretty great. <laughs> That's true. I mean, there was a slip and slide moment that I still think is the chef's kiss, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> I still watch that scene. Oh, of to course. To anybody who's never seen it. <laughs> of course. Well, I mean, this is such a good cast, too. Yeah. Like, uh, we, uh, we got a rap already, though. What? I, 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 you know, yes, yeah, I'm proud of you. We can't right. extend this. This is crazy. Um, one, oh. one more minute. One okay. more minute. Cool. Marco. You've got this great cast. Yeah. Uh, how, what, what were these guys, that, how easy was it to find out, yeah, we need Wyatt. Oh man, dude, like Wyatt, well, like both both adults in the film, you know, represent different kind of emotionalities. You know, Carrie is like that family emotional core. She's the heartbeat of the movie. Mm -hmm. And Wyatt is the, you know, the dad who means well, but he's got, an, he's got his own kind of wishes. And yeah. in his, you know, he, he didn't, he had his goal, and then he got sidetracked by something that was debilitating and awful. And and so that's just like great fodder for a scary movie because now the dad is going to be doing things that he's going to keep secret from his family. And so Wyatt just embodied that so well. You know, he could bring that warmth, but then he could also bring that kind of scariness at the end of the see the Jack Torrance kind of vibe. Uh, and and Carrie is just like all of those moments with the kids. It's just so heartfelt. You know, and the kids are great too. The kid, Amelie and Gavin, they're fantastic. Getting a vibe here. Do you have a boyfriend? No. Hey, someone's coming over in a minute. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. Mark?